at 11. Three dead and dozens injured. An Amtrak train taking a new route from Seattle to Portland for the first time tumbles off the tracks and into traffic on I-5. Well, we got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. Passengers thrown across train cars, some barely able to walk away. Survivors describe the chaos as they scrambled to get out. Talk about right place, right time. A Portland doctor was driving to Seattle this morning and jumped in to help at the scene of the crash. How he was able to help the victims. So we as humans always want to have those answers. Uh, you can be assured we're going to get those answers. And Washington Governor Jay Inslee promises answers to the big question, why did this happen? Your news starts now. First tonight, we are following the latest developments in that Amtrak train derailment in DuPont, Washington, near Olympia. Three people are dead, 72 were taken to hospitals. 13 of the 14 train cars derailed, sending some crashing down onto I-5. Southbound lanes of I-5 will stay closed through commuting hours tomorrow. All three people who died were on the train. KGW's Kylie Boshi joins us live tonight from DuPont, Washington, with more on what happened this morning. Kyle? Joe, investigators have a long night ahead of them, along with road crews. You can see them beginning to disassemble the train behind us and clear the debris, but road crews don't anticipate opening up the southbound lanes of I-5, the main connector between Port Seattle and Portland, until late tomorrow morning. Emergency responders lit up the crash site with bright floodlights as investigators assess what went wrong early Monday morning. Three people died and dozens were injured, including 10 seriously, after an Amtrak train derailed near Olympia. I thought, we derailed. We derailed. We came off the rails. When glass and shatter and people are flying, you know, you're like, oh my God, this is real. At 7.33, the Amtrak passenger train bound for Portland jumped the tracks, spilling off a bridge onto Interstate 5. We are on the ground. This is the radio call from Amtrak moments after the crash. Hey guys, what happened? Uh, we were coming around the corner to take the bridge over I-5 there, uh, right north into Squally, and we went on the ground. Okay, are you, um, is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. This was the inaugural run of Amtrak train number 501, which left Seattle for Portland. The train was running down a new bypass created to avoid slow curves when it unexpectedly jumped the tracks. Amtrak says 80 passengers were on board, along with five crew members. We have several people who are hospitalized this evening, and we're reaching out to them and supporting them, including both our customers and our employees. Investigators say it's too early to speculate what may have caused the crash. The NTSB will be looking at all possible factors, including speed and the condition of the track. And we're told federal investigators are already on the ground here. Additionally, a specially trained NTSB team from Washington, D.C. is flying in late this evening to examine the scene. Back to you. Kylie Boshi live for us tonight near Olympia. Kyle, thank you for that report. As Kyle mentioned, dozens of people were hurt in the derailment, some so badly they had to be rushed to the hospital. Others were able to walk away with only scrapes and bruises. KGW's Mike Benner is live for us tonight at Union Station with more of their stories. Mike? Well, Joe, Amtrak train 501 was destined for Portland's Union Station, but as we know by now, it did not make it. It derailed more than 125 miles to the north of here, leaving those who survived with stories that are difficult to fathom. A lot of tossing and squealing and rattling of the train. And kind of From his hospital bed, Charlie Hebner describes the moment Amtrak train 501 jumped the tracks. It kind of got dark. I found myself on the floor. Hebner, one of more than 75 passengers on board, is a train enthusiast who couldn't miss the inaugural run between Seattle and Portland, just like Anthony Raimondi. The unfortunate part is the loss of life. The retired Amtrak employee was sitting near the front of the train when it suddenly derailed northeast of Olympia. Things just started to tip over and as it was going around and then all of a sudden just ended up on the side and everything went dark and... Stuff started flying around and that was it, and then it stopped. With the help of a fellow passenger, Raimondi climbed out a window. I could hear people screaming and stuff in the other parts. No question about it, this will stick with Raimondi forever, and he is not alone. It was crazy. It kind of felt like 
just like the end of the world. Emma Schaefer goes to school in the Seattle area. She was taking the train to Portland for the holidays. Like you just come out of like, I don't know, like a nuclear bunker and you're just like standing amongst all this wreckage. Wreckage that still wasn't clear by nightfall. Then again, not every day does a train derail, killing three and injuring dozens more. I thought we derailed. We derailed. We came off the rails, I could tell. But others were in utter disbelief, like Charlie Hebner and his wife, who was riding alongside him. Maybe I should stay off trains. And Beverly and Charlie Hebner were released from the hospital this afternoon. That, of course, good news. We're hoping others who were hospitalized get the okay to go home soon as well. Back to you. We certainly all hope that. Thank you, Mike. Among the people helping the injured was a neurosurgeon from OHSU. Dr. Nathan Selden and his son were on their way to Seattle when they saw the crash and stopped to help. We saw fire engines and uh, ambulances with full sirens going the wrong way up the other side very, very fast and realized something pretty dramatic had happened up ahead of us. They pulled off the road and Dr. Selden asked if he could help. First responders directed him to the triage tent just a few yards away from the wreckage. He worked with other doctors, nurses and first responders to help treat people with all kinds of injuries. Selden says he's seen the work of first responders countless times in his years as a doctor. But being a part of it today was amazing. I, I sit back in the hospital. I, I, as a neurosurgeon, I do take care of trauma patients with brain and spine injuries, re really regular part of my job. But I have never been out in the field and seen this kind of destruction. Uh, this was an extraordinary event, and I have never seen this many injured people all at once. It's a, it's a very different setting, and the first responders are terrific out there. And I was just glad that uh, some of the medical personnel and I who happened by could, could be helpful to them. Dr. Selden said it was the least he could do. His son helped too, helping direct people away from the wreckage and toward the areas where they could get help. Reporters at our sister station in Seattle were actually on the train this morning, covering its inaugural journey from Seattle to Portland. This is from some of their live reports this morning and video they took inside the train. It was supposed to be a celebration of a major infrastructure improvement. But the crew got off the train at 715 at the Tacoma stop just minutes before it derailed. I mean, there was every type of person on board this train this morning. You had the rail enthusiasts who wanted to be a part of history. You had the work commuters who were trying to get to the office. You had the young people who were potentially going home after maybe a college semester. And now this. Well, you can hear Alex Rozier was shaken there from King 5 in Seattle. He said it's been a rough day coming to terms with what happened. And he says he continues to worry about a lot of the people he interviewed this morning before that derailment. Four Amtrak cars derailed on the Cascades route back in July. This is video from that crash when the cars derailed in Stillicum near the Chambers Bay golf course. Four of the train's 15 cars derailed along the old train route. No one was hurt in that derailment. Investigators say high speed and human error were the cause. Oregon Governor Kate Brown says the state has sent resources to Washington to help piece together what happened today. The governor was in Newburgh today to talk My about transportation. It was a topic that was set before today's well derailment. Families. Brown mentioned the derailment in her prepared I remarks and afterwards she talked about seeing the early reports of what had happened. I saw the photos this morning. I had an uh, early call with Governor Inslee. Our uh, thoughts and prayers are with the families impacted by this horrible tragedy in Washington. We offered uh, all of Oregon's assistance uh, behind the state. Whatever they need, we're there for them. Part of that assistance included immediately sending a state railroad transportation investigator up to Washington to help. Governor Brown said at the time she talked with Governor Inslee, it was still early in the day. Information was still coming in and they were both in shock. While investigators try to figure out what happened, Washington Governor Jay Inslee is urging people not to rush to judgment. He'll meet with the NTSB and promises answers will come eventually. I've had some preliminary information, but there's no conclusions that anyone can reach at all about any source. So we as humans always want to have those answers. Uh, you can be assured we're going to get those answers. The NTSB uh, is on their way. Uh, they may arrive as early as uh, this evening. 
and we will make sure that every agency gets to the bottom of what happened. But that's going to take Governor Inslee declared a state of emergency in Washington. President Trump <laughs> tweeted about what happened. Even though these tracks are brand new, the president said, quote, this shows more than ever why our soon to be submitted infrastructure plan must be approved quickly. Seven trillion dollars spent in the Middle East while our roads, bridges, tunnels, railways and more crumble. Not for long. Then in a second tweet, he offered thoughts and prayers to the victims. Washdot says the southbound lanes on I-5 won't reopen until at least tomorrow morning, and that leaves a lot of drivers searching for a new route southbound from Seattle past Olympia. The Washington Department of Transportation does have some suggestions, but neither will be very direct or fast. The first is taking SR-16 to SR-3. That's estimated to take at least an hour and a half, and that's without any traffic. But that is still better than the alternatives. Washdot says they saw significant backups this afternoon along SR 507 and SR 7, and they do not recommend travelers take SR 302. They said that route took more than two hours today. If you want to fly instead of drive, Alaska Airlines is dropping the price of tickets between Portland and Seattle tonight and tomorrow. The price changes when you add the flight to your card and go to check out. Flights are selling out quickly. One traveler we talked to today said she had to call Alaska to get a seat on a flight. This is a developing situation and we will continue to bring you updates overnight as we learn them. Our live coverage will continue tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. on KGW News at sunrise and always on KGW.com. Still ahead, a fight is brewing over a homeless shelter on Southeast Foster Road. The concerns neighbors brought up tonight at a PAC meeting. Plus, Senator Jeff Berkeley says someone submitted fake comments to the FCC against net neutrality under his name. Now you can find out if online scammers used your name coming up. And we have a very December-like storm on the way for a change. Heavy snow coming to the Cascades. Right now, though, the rain has lifted north and it's warm outside. We'll show you how warm and then how cold it's going to get. Plus, a quick look, first look at Christmas.